Everything in XM Cloud is an item. Content, configuration, customizations. Some of those items are tightly coupled to functionality provided by developers. So it makes sense to also have those items serialized as a file in your source code repository to be under development control. In this tutorial, we talk about what serialization is, how it is set up, and what is best practice to keep in source code, repository, and what not. Before we actually start, let's quickly clarify what serialization means and what we need to solve with it. In general, item serialization means that we persist a representation of an item from XM Cloud as a file in our source code repository. Sidecore content serialization is able to connect to XM Cloud via the Content Management API and on the one hand pull items from XM Cloud to our local in YAML format, but also push the item representation we have in our local file system to an XM Cloud instance. The items that are considered for synchronization can be configured. But why do we want to persist items in the source code repository? Usually we have items like templates or layout related items our code depends on. To make sure the items are available in each instance we deploy our code to, we want to have those items along with the code. When using several environments like dev, QA, staging and prod, we can deploy new features along with their items and keep environments consistent. Also, when working with a local XM Cloud environment using Docker, we can ensure that all developers have the same code base along with the required items. You can find detailed information in our documentation. Sidecore content serialization can be achieved using the Sidecore CLI. You can find a detailed description on how to install the Sidecore CLI in our documentation. The configuration for Sidecore content serialization consists of two main areas, the Sidecore.json file and the files ending with .module.json. The Sidecore.json file is located in the root folder of your solution. It comes with the XM Cloud starter kit. In here, we can configure what module.json files should be considered for serialization, the plugins with its particular versions and some general settings for the serialization. Under modules, we can see that all files located in the source folder ending with .module.json are considered to check what items should be serialized and what to be excluded. Let's have a look at this file. When we navigate to the source folder, there is already a file called renderinghost.module.json. In here, we can find a configuration what items shall be serialized. You can have multiple of these module.json files. Just make sure that the namespace field is unique. In the item object, we find an array of includes. Each include defines what item path in XM Cloud should be considered. In the name field, we define the name of the folder the item or items should be stored within our file system. The path field is the actual path in XM Cloud to the item. The scope field defines if we just want to serialize a single item, items with children, meaning its direct first level sub-items, items and descendants, meaning all sub-items underneath a certain item, or descendants only, which excludes the item specified in the path. Furthermore, we can define so-called rules to include and exclude dedicated child or sub-items from a path specified. The way how it comes with the starter kit, only the default rendering host item is serialized. Isn't that enough? Well, usually not. So what do we need to consider for serialization and what not? As mentioned earlier, we want to serialize items that are created by us as developers and that our code depends on. That does not include items that come with the vanilla XM Cloud itself, only custom created items. In XM Cloud, that's usually templates from the project folder that have been created during the site collection creation. This will be extended in the future. We might also have templates in the feature folder. Right now, there are none. The branch templates from the project and feature folder. Right now, there are no custom branch templates yet. Headless SXA modules, in case we are using those.
Media Library folder with the shared and site related folders only, not including any media assets. Layouts in case there are any custom ones. Rendering items from project folder. There could be renderings in the feature folder as well, but we have not created any renderings yet. Placeholder settings from project folder. A folder for our custom placeholder settings has been created already with the site collection creation. There could be custom placeholder settings in the feature folder as well. The site collection root item. The site root item, including the automatically created items like the home item. The media item. The data item with its direct children for the different data source folders. Dictionary item with direct children the presentation section including all sub-items and the whole settings section including all sub-items as well. Ok, now that we know what to serialize, let's set up the configuration in the module.json file. Luckily, there is an example on my GitHub gist available. Let's copy that over for the start. Back in Visual Studio Code, I create a new file in the source folder and I name it company.module.json.template. And I copy the content from the gist in here. This file is just a duplication. Next, I create another file called company.module.json in which I paste the content again. As this will be my serialization configuration, I need to replace the placeholders. To replace the first one called site collection name, I mark the one and press Ctrl H to do a search and replace. I replace this by my site collection name, which is company dev. I have to do that in several places. Now I can replace the second placeholder called site name and I replace this with the site name I used when I created my first site which is company dev as well. In order to sync or serialize the items from my XM Cloud instance to my local file system, I need to connect to XM Cloud. Therefore, I log in first using the .NET Cycle Cloud login command. In the browser, the device confirmation screen opens and I confirm. Now I have to provide my email address. Depending on your authentication provider, you might need to provide a password as well. I select an organization as I'm part of many organizations. If you're only part of one organization, this screen will not be shown to you. Now that I'm authenticated, I need to connect to my particular environment as I run many XM Cloud projects and environment within my organization. Therefore, I run the command .NET Sidecore Cloud Environment Connect, passing the allow write parameter and the environment ID which I get from the XM Cloud Deploy app. Starting in the portal, I enter the XM Cloud Deploy app. Select the headless SXA tutorial series project and the dev environment. I switch to the details tab and copy the environment ID shown here. After pasting the environment ID, I execute the command. In the user.json file, I can see that the dev environment has been added. Now I can run the serialization command .NET Sidecore Sir pull using the environment name parameter from the user.json file. An error is showing stating that one of the configured paths from my company.module.json file did not exist in XM Cloud. In this case, it's the company dev folder in the template slash feature folder. So let's delete this part of the config. We can bring that back anytime later from the company.module.json.template file. There are a few more that need to be removed. The branch templates, the modules, and the layouts. After the removal, I run the command again. And now the items have been serialized to my file system. 
checking the item folder, I can see that also the folders from branches or layouts have been created during the first run, when it failed. Those can be removed as well. All the other items configured have been serialized correctly. Of course, we could perform changes in these YAML files and push the changes back to the XM Cloud environment using the .NET Sidecore Serp push command. As this does not make sense at this moment, we'll skip it. Let's remove the folders that are not required, the branches, layouts, modules, and template feature folder. Now I submit the changes passing the comment Edit Serialized Items and commit and push them to the main branch. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover Sidequest channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.